Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock to determine whether it's a buy or a sell. At the end of the video, we're going to look at the financial ratios. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to look at is Lindy. It's the world's largest industrial gas company by market share as well as revenue. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 131 spot $4 billion. So it's a massive company. And let's see what they're trading at, 250. One share of stock is $250. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm gonna pull our actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Next, I'm gonna pull the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And then the revenue, which are the sales on the income statement. We also wanna take a quick look at the numbers. So the free cash flow is huge, 1 billion up to 2.5 billion, and it's growing every year. Their net income is also pretty high as well. Their revenue went from 10 billion to 28 billion. That's a massive jump. It's not hard jumping from 10,000 to 28,000 in revenue, but from 10 billion to 28 billion, that's a really impressive feat. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay 246 million of interest on their debt. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to liability section. Current debt of 3.2 billion, that's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of 10 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. Interest payments on debt is tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. Income before tax of 2.9 billion. Income tax of 769 million. So the cost of debt is only 1.3%, so it's really cheap for this company to get debt financing. Let's get the beta, that's how volatile the stock is. 0.79 so the stock moves much less than the market let's go back to the balance sheet get their current assets we need this to calculate the current ratio later that's 10.4 billion let's see what that is 2.7 billion of cash 4.6 billion of net receivables this is how much money other companies owe this company 1.7 billion of inventory and 264 million of other Current liabilities, that's 12.1 billion. Let's see what that is. Current debt of 3.3 billion, accounts payable of 3.3 billion. This is how much money this company owes other companies. 1.8 billion of accrued liabilities. These are expenses the company has incurred but it hasn't paid yet. 1.8 billion of deferred revenue. So when you collect payment for a sale of a product or service, and you don't actually deliver the product service, you have to book the revenue onto your balance sheet in the liability section as deferred revenue. But when you actually deliver the product or service, then you pull it out of deferred revenue and onto the income statement as revenue. Other of $1 billion. The equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet, that's 49 billion. That's 1 million of common stock, 16.8 billion of retained earnings and negative 4.8 billion of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income, 3.3 billion. We need these four numbers to calculate the ratios later. Let's look at a capital structure, 22% debt, cost of debt is 1.3%, 78% equity, cost of equity is 8.4%, and the WAC is 6.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and the cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows we also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $104 billion. We discounted these numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital, that's in green. We get a value of the company of $94 billion. We divide that by 525 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 179. It's trading at 250, so it's trading at a 39% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're even lower, they're at 121. So let's see where the stock has been trading in the past few years. So it's pretty much at its all time high, which is really interesting. So coronavirus is not affecting the stock at all. With really big companies like this, everybody in the investing community knows about them. 
So it's not hard for them to attract investors. With these small companies, these microcap companies, nobody knows about them, so nobody invests in them. Let's look at the financial ratios, bad price to earnings, not such a great price to sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, there are 57.5. So investors are paying about $58 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 4.7. So investors are paying about $5 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.7. So investors are paying $2.70 for a $1 book value. Not such a good current ratio, weak ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they're a little shy in covering their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're only at 5%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 13.3, so no problem covering their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done a video on Chemtrade, a Canadian company, Grace, Lindy, and Lyondell Barcel. And if Lindy has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in price of earnings, price of sales, price to book, current ratio, and ROE but they do have the best in debt. They have the lowest amount of debt and they're by far the largest company. They're a giant at 131 billion market cap. It's much less risky to invest in such big companies like this. If the market goes down a lot, this stock will go down a lot less. And the company's been around over 100 years, so they're not going anywhere. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.